A very warm welcome to all of you friends and uh, very special thanks to Dr. Shantaram Kane for agreeing to our request to deliver a talk, to Dr. Barwalia who will be presiding over the function today and heartfelt thanks to all of you who have made it in large numbers in spite of uh, very heavy rains. We were quite uh, apprehensive whether today's event would be a dampener, but certainly it hasn't been. What uh, especially heartens me and my colleagues here is that there are so many people who come here for the first time, and they are <coughs> people from the field of healthcare, practitioners of Ayurveda, homeopathy naturopathy and some people who are not professionals but they are deep believers. I don't have to dwell on uh, the enormous challenges that we face in, in healthcare <coughs> in India, indeed all over the world. We simply have to change direction and seek new ways of affordable, effective health care for the masses. It was way back in 1978 that the World Health Organization, at its uh, historic session at, in Almata, Kazakhstan, adopted this slogan, Health for All. Health for All by 2000 and we are in 2010 and health for all is nowhere in sight. In year 2000, the United Nations gave, you know, held a special session called the Millennium Session and adopted the Millennium Development Goals. The MDGs have a very important place for health care goals. We are 2010 the deadline for MDGs is 2015, only five years away, and we are nowhere near reaching those goals. And healthcare is not a challenge only for poor countries, so-called developing countries, but we know what the situation is in uh, a rich country like the United States. So affordability, friends, has become a challenge for every country in the world. We simply have to therefore change direction, change the paradigm and go in for affordable, sustainable health care and that's why Dr. Kane's talk today is extremely important. I'm very happy that we have uh, Dr. Barwalia to preside over today's session. Dr. Barwalia is a very distinguished homeopath who practices in Ghatkopar and also Chirabazar. He is uh, the founder and uh, the chairman of uh, MB Barwalia Foundation which, is do which has been doing excellent work in holistic health care for mentally challenged children. I'm associated with this foundation and I have seen absolutely unbelievable transformation that holistic health care has brought about in mentally challenged children. So we are very happy to have you, Prafulji. Friends, uh, we are already a little late. I'm sorry for that. Nevertheless, uh, uh, we want uh, this talk to also be followed by good interaction because you know so many of you, as I said, are practitioners of healthcare, and it is out of this interaction that this function will become more uh, more productive. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, Lena. Take over.
is a chemical engineer by training. He had got his B.Tech from IIT Bombay and his master's and Ph.D. from MIT in the U.S. And he worked in many chemical companies in the U.S. and in India. Um, and then after retirement, he did something dramatic, um, which was that he discovered this um, new method of preparing extracts from plants, uh, where, which, uh, you know, the, the technical name is biomass activity enhancing system. But uh, when, as he explained to us when he talked to us the first time he came to ORF, it's just about super molecules, molecules which are very active, which means that you need to take them in much smaller doses. And um, uh, since 1983, he's been interested in Ayurveda. And so what he's been able to do is to bring the knowledge of these new kind of drugs, which you can take at much lower concentrations, into the field of Ayurveda. And what is exciting for ORF is that we... Uh, I, I know that several of you here are practicing Ayurveda doctors. So if you, if, you know, we could put... Dr. Kane and all of you together, then maybe we do have uh, the chance to make a real difference the Indian way, actually. And um, Dr. Kane has been a distinguished alumnus of IIT Bombay, and he also has received the Distinguished Service Award from IIT Bombay. And last but not least, his, um, for his solution for affordable health care, he was awarded um, in January 20, uh, 2010, he was awarded an award by the National Geographic as part of its Shaping the Future contest. So we are all looking forward to a great talk by Dr. Khan. Thank you. Uh, to begin with, I sincerely thank ORF for giving me this platform to talk to all of you about what can be best described as my, my, my passion for the past many years. Before I get into the talk, I think some information about how I got into it is worthwhile. It was in 1983, then through a accident, a friend of mine, Mr. Deshpande, took me to see Veni Madhav Shastri Joshi, who then was 86 year old. I talked to him about Ayurveda and I said to him that, look, all I know is that there are hundreds and thousands of formulations in Ayurveda. And I'm just curious to understand how so many could have been developed. So he told me at that time what he called the theory of signature. I was fascinated by this idea, or this theory of signature. And I said to him, look, you know, what I really like is to emulate our ancestors. In other words, let's select a plant on which, which was not known in the days of Ayurveda, and therefore there is no information on its uses. So in those days, Su Babul was very fashionable. So I said, why not we select Su Babul? I will take it or do experiments on myself, you just tell me what I should do and how I should record observation. So we started. But after a few weeks, I used to go to his uh, clinic, uh, rather his house, once a week, every Sunday. He said to me, no, it won't work. I said, why, what's the problem? He says, no, you're not a white deer, therefore it won't work. <laughs> now, when an 86-year-old says that, that's the final thing. I mean, so thereafter, my status changed that from a student to a Colombia. But I mean, I continued. And so now, what I'm going to talk to you is something which was initiated in this form way back in 1983. Now, as you all know, uh, affordability and availability of healthcare is a worldwide issue. Today, every now and then you will see people talk about affordability. Uh, new co words come up. Somebody will say Gandhian engineering. What it really means is affordability, sustainability and accessibility. This is a worldwide problem. Not only because costs are high and rising rapidly worldwide, but also because it is now known that many of the so-called super drugs have a lot of side effects. Any of you have taken antibiotics, any of you have taken steroids, you know that there are side effects and this is not a secret. There are books written 
In fact, every doctor has a handbook which says what are the contraindications, what are the side effects of every single drug that is given to you. Normally, we are not aware. Secondly, what is happening is the integration of the, the drug and the advice on diet or what used to be called pathya has all but disappeared. Most of the allopaths normally don't tell you anything about it. And from the feedback I get from people who come to me, there are alarming signs that possibly because of commercial pressure, even Vaidyas who are of course supposed to deal with it extensively are, not that they are not dealing with it, but you know, if you just give a short list to a person, don't it, don't do this, and if you do not very aggressively emphasize the importance, it's not going to be followed. And that is what is happening. Now, of course, people are optimizing what I call, uh, you know, when we, we were in engineering, you know, we were always optimizing a process. So people are optimizing processes. Somebody will say we should go for generics which cost half as much, true. Somebody will say, well, let's do research in India which costs one third as much, true. But none of these solutions can really provide the kind of uh, uh, cost reduction that is required for these things to become accessible, affordable, and available to the masses. So what do we need? There is something called a black swan event. There is a book by Taleb, and he describes a black swan event as a rare event, which is impossible to predict. There are negative black swan events like 9-11, but there are also positive black swan events like a disruptive invention. And according to Taleb, it is such black swan events which have profound impact on society and the direction that the society takes. So, of course, part of this is in retrospect, but if we were to have a wish list of the kind of disruptive invention that we would like to have, what would it be? Obviously, you want simple technology, at least a hundredfold reduction in the natural product dosage. Now, why natural products? Because, you know, all of us know that natural products already have hundreds of different molecules with all sorts of properties, and therefore you don't have to start synthesizing anything. And if you could reduce dose at least hundredfold with simple technology, in addition, if it is user-friendly, plus low side effects, that would be nice. And in addition to this, I mean, this will not be enough, you will also have to have a disruptive business model so that this will reach people in an affordable way. How well, can this be done? So now this is where we go back to my hobby, which, as I said, started in 1983. I started, I bought a few books, I started reading about various things, and soon I read about a process called Siddha Thailam. It is described in detail in Charanga Samhita and actually Siddha Thailam are mentioned in Charak which means it's, it was known 3,000 years ago. So Sharanga Samhita gives a typical recipe. It says take one part of pounded herb, eight parts of oil, 32 parts of the juice of the same herb, boil them together, dry off water and filter. Now what it really means from my chemical engineering point of view, it's simply an extract of the herb in oil. Now in the classical method, the focus is on juice. In fact, Many practitioners will say that we add juice again and again to increase its virya or potency. In Kerala, there is something called Shatapaki Balatailam, which means you are adding juice 100 times to increase the potency. Now, when I started, I made such an oil from a herb out of curiosity. That herb was described as Divya Vanaspati and that's why I made the oil. And what I really did is I tinkered with the process. So what does that mean? Did I make any dramatic changes? No. As a matter of fact, all I did is I changed the focus from juice to cell mass. In other words, I didn't use any juice at all. And when you don't use any juice at all, obviously your cooking time goes down drastically. I mean, that's common sense, right? And we know in food technology, it's well known, if you cook in any oil for a very long time, there is a lot of degradation and the degradation products are toxic. 